Uh, well, Dr. Osaze Iwa is already seated with me. He is a very close watcher of uh, the global economy. Good morning, Dr. Osaze. Good morning, Mr. Dennis. Okay. Well so, um, the poverty in our continent, I mean, account for um, around 60% or if not more. Well, if you want to look at uh, the major mission of the, um, the World Bank, yeah. is of course to, to help fight poverty. Yeah. Well, the, this projection, what do you make of uh, this current projection now uh, coming through from uh, the uh, global money lender? Yeah, a few um, hours ago, about a day, about a day there, about the yeah. World Bank Bank projections about the poverty situation in Africa. Yeah. And you know, it, um, it revealed downwards the growth projections for sub saharan African countries. Mm. And, um, and, and, and it's really not surprising because, you know, the World Bank in 2022 for Nigeria made a projection yeah. of 3.8% growth mm. for the entire year. Yes. But you see, first, first quarter we had 3.11% um, mm. GDP growth, second quarter 3.54% third quarter we dropped significantly to 2.52 percent so from the first three quarters yeah. when you take an average 3.11 3.54 2.52 2 divided by the three quarters you see that you are hovering around three percent three three point five three yeah. three point zero five percent so okay. it's very way below the three point eight percent so by november they already done a review downwards to three point one for nigeria so yeah. Our fourth quarter, with all this, um, with intensity in flooding, you know, the floodings started in the last quarter. Yes. Okay, and most of us, and it affected. We saw so much farmlands that were destroyed by the flooding. Mm. Um, even the tax rates and so on. The fuel scarcity has intensified this yeah. fourth quarter. So we intend, I, I, I think that fourth quarter growth may even be more dismal than the 2.52 in third quarter. So clearly, we are not going to meet the projection. So, World Bank has done a review downwards of growth projections for African countries. Nigeria was put at 2.9% mm. in 2023, yeah. that the country will go at 2.9%. And that's very, very, that's very, very dismal because okay. for a developing economy, they also made projections that advance economy, because it's yes. a global thing, yeah, you is, know? Yeah. Mm. Since the Russia-Ukraine war, there mm. has been a drop in global well-being recently. So they made a downward, um, um, projection for advanced countries mm. to 1.7% for 2023. But you can understand that because, you know, in economics, basic economics, 300 level, 400 level economics, yeah. they, you, you have what you call full employment level yeah. and potential employment level. So full employment level is the full capacity that you don't have, the, you've, you've met all your resources, mm. you've annexed all your resources at yeah. full employment level. But when you have potential employment, that's, the, it's not yet, you are not operating at full capacity yet. Okay. So in between potential level and full employment, you have this gap called idle capacity. Okay. So for advanced economies, the variety is just like, the best way to explain is a bucket. You have a bucket this big. Yeah. You have water filled to this point. Mm. So this small, this small percentage, yeah. even if you just put small drops, the growth it is fine. To, yeah, yeah. Okay. But like when you have a bucket this much, and you have water here, so you need so much to get Something, to the top. Yeah. So for developed countries like Nigeria, we should be going at double. In fact, CBM, World Bank has said for us to reach any reasonable growth yeah. for the next 30 years. Mm. Countries like Nigeria and other less developed countries and emerging markets should be going at double digits for 30 years. So if we are going double digits, that's 10% yeah. and yeah. above. So if we are going at 2.9%, which is the projection for World Bank, yes and you have so much capacity, the example I used, yes. it's, it's, it's terrible. But for advanced economies, they almost have full capacity. So 1.7%, they can't even go beyond 10% because there is no capacity, no idle capacity. Okay. They've utilized. Okay. So I think it's a worry for SSEs, that sub-Saharan yeah. African countries, Nigeria especially, it was put at 2.9%. Angola was put at 2.8% for 2023. South Africa will put at 1.4 percent. Those are the three largest economies. For South Africa, you can really understand. So, really, it's not it's not far fetched. The reasons are simple: food security, indebtedness. Mm. These countries are high. You see, Nigeria. In fact, the DMO just brought a report that by May 2029, we'll be hitting 77 trillion naira, especially when they securitize the ways and means that yes. we talk about. 77 trillion. So, and you are servicing these debts at the same time. We are using 6.5 to 
trillion to service in our 2023 budget, and we have to take another, if our budget is based on about 12, 12 trillion loans. So World Bank is not saying anything new. It's, it's, it's very glaring in our eyes. Inflation, poverty, and you saw the multidimensional poverty figures that were released yeah, on 133, yeah. mm. 133 million, multidimensional. That's you, you, might, you might not be monetarily poor, mm. but you are multidimensionally poor yeah. because it has to do nutrition, a eating balanced diet, mm -hmm. you have access to quality education, quality health care, light, so, yeah. infrastructure, your, your, your and so capacity on. capacity to, uh, to really... To get all the, yeah, yeah, the basic true. needs. Exactly. But monetarily poor mm. was put at 95.1% based on below the national poverty land. The national poverty line for now, because there was a time when um, World Bank used to say, if you are below $1, $2, yes. that may, but now every country has its own poverty line. So yes. Nigeria's poverty line is at 137,480,000 Naira per year. So that means you have 95 million people yes. who live, who cannot afford, or who do not earn as much as 137,000 a year. Divided by 12, that is 11,000 Naira. 95 million people do not aim up to 11,000. So, so, uh, so, so, so these are not yeah. shocking reports that World Bank is telling us. It's, it's, it's not, it's, it's this small. Okay, so, yeah. so, but uh, uh, basically, um, if you want to also look at, um, just like I asked earlier, if you want yeah. to look at the, the mission of the World Bank itself, yeah. uh, bringing all of these projections, some, yeah. uh, some persons will say, okay, um, the, the World Bank itself is based in the US, yeah. it's also controlled by the US yeah. and its allies. And uh, maybe um, some of these projections, even though Africa has got plenty of potentialities, yes, yes. whether Africa is yet to realize that it has so much that it mm. can do with all of the things that it, that it has. Do yes. you think Africa has not realized or is Africa not taking advantage of the so much potentialities that it has? Yeah, it's, it's, it's two ways. First of all, the World Bank, that's their mission, really, in answering your question. They have a mission. That's a signatory to all countries that mm. they are to provide economic guidance, mm. economic advice, yes. focus mm. for countries. And that's the signatory that most countries have signed up to one. And two, because at the end of the day, yeah. most of these countries run to World Bank, IMF, for loans at the end of the day. So they have to give you a path. You see Ghana that did restructuring recently. Why did they do the restructuring? Because they were running to IMF to ask for mm. loans. Because the euro bonds market is terrible now. Yeah. Cost of borrowing is extremely high. True. So that's where most African countries were running to, to get cheap yeah. funds. But now, when Fed, the um, US yes. counterpart of our yeah. central bank, increased rates, they have been increasing rates, and so it was very, very impossible to borrow there. So they are now running back to IMF, and IMF is not going to give you loans if they find that your sustainability, debt sustainability is, is, is shocking. So they will advise you that you should restructure your debt to be able to, sh to be sure that you can pay. Mm. And when you restructure your debt, it means that you are asking for favorable terms. Your existing yeah. loans, you are asking that the interest rate should be reduced. The payment time, if it was mm. 20 years you had to pay, should be increased to maybe 40 years, yeah. so that it allows you to spread your payment. If you were paying 10, 10,000 every month, you now reduce to 5, 5,000 so that you can meet up. So that was the condition IMF gave Ghana. Ghana had to restructure. But it's not restructuring, it's not a good signal to the world. But that's it. But second question that you said, African countries, they know the potential. I think they know. It's just a problem of, I don't know whether it's, it has something to do with our genes. Because we are highly, we are highly, blessed. look at Ghana. Mm. Ghana has gold. Yeah. Even oil was um, well, discovered recently there. discovered there, yeah. even commercial quality. Nigeria is rich. South Africa, Angola. In fact, when you look at African countries, they are, you have about eight African countries in the top 20 oil producing True. countries in the world. True. Look at Qatar. Look at what Qatar is doing with oil. Look at them. Um, look at Libya. Look at Saudi Arabia. The population of, uh, they are in top two. They are not and, as big as one state in Nigeria. I'm telling you, with yeah. all our population, mm. Nigeria has, in fact, what you can lash on to, that's what, why China has become one of the highest major um, economies in the world today, mm. because of their population. Mm. There was a phone, um, I, um, um, iPhone, the, the latest version that they were to release, US were to release. Yeah. They had to postpone it. Why? Because China was going through lockdowns. Because, why? Because of their population. Yeah. They are the ones, they are, that, their population gives them the advantage. And that's what Nigeria is supposed to be lashing on. We have the human capital. We have agricultural potential. Our land is extremely fertile. But I think it has been a combination of leadership problems to lack of um, 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 planning, because you see African countries, when they had this summit in um, US, when they went to meet um, President Joe Biden, you had almost all of them asking for debt forgiveness. And I'm wondering, why are you, 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 you take debt, you take loans that you can see the House of Assembly was calling the president recently for the ways and means, yeah. 20, 23 trillion naira 
what was it used for? You can't, so it, I think it's a, it's a combination of accountability problem, but for potentials, yeah. African countries are high, we have high potentials, except for very few countries, and that's why the World Bank projection said um, for the entire, for Nigeria 2.9, but yeah. for the entire sub-Saharan African region, they projected at 3.8 percent, and that's because of few countries in Africa who are doing well, some are doing well. Look at South Africa. Yeah. When Nigeria dropped, our GDP dropped to 2.52 from 3.54 in the third quarter. South Africa increased. Their GDP rose by 1.6%. Yes. Their inflation is just 7.4% when ours is 21.47. So some other Africans are doing well. South Africa makes cars. They sell Toyota cars. Yeah. Botswana, their GDP is very well. Our per capita um, income in Nigeria is $5,000. That's when you devour GDP by our population. So some African countries are doing well. Botswana, South Africa, Egypt. So on the whole, some African countries are doing well. We okay. have to give it to them. But it's just few countries like Nigeria who are... All right. So, um, uh, so uh, quickly, uh, there was, uh, there was um, a, a report that came out because I'm just seeing uh, the picture of uh, um, a visa... I'm talking about uh, most uh, functional visa across, yeah. I mean, across the globe. Uh, there was um, a report that just came through, I think, actually around three days ago. Yeah, yeah. Or thereabouts. Um, and, uh, well, that report says Nigeria has actually dropped 38 places. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, can we also link this to how um, our, our economy is also faring? Obviously. Mm. We, 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 we have to link it to that. Then link it to security, too. Mm. Because it, it has, we, we seem to have, the country seems to have um, carved a bad niche for itself. You talk of um, fraud stars, you talk of um, internet fraud, mm. you talk of um, insecurity. You know, these, these people hear, they, they hear the sound bites coming out from Nigeria. Yeah. The, the latest um, train attack, yeah. you know, farmers had that crisis. So it has affected the rating. In fact, you hear people say if you want to get to um, get a visa quickly, you should go to other neighboring countries like Ghana. So, so it has downgraded our ratings. Even in the financial sector, yeah. our credit ratings have recently been dropped by Fisher and Munda. So very low it's level. Crazy. So yeah. so we are not mm. we are it, it, they've downgraded our rating, they've downgraded our currencies. So I think the next leader who will be coming has mm. so much on his hand, both on financial grounds okay. and moral grounds. Right, yeah. let, let's talk about uh, Dr. Yuan. Let's talk about yeah. uh, the, the, the let's go back to the projection. Now with yeah. the projection coming from uh, the World Bank now, what would you uh, rather say that uh, the leaders can do, whether the the outgoing leadership or the incoming leadership, yeah. what they can do to see that. Um, uh, this project because it's a, it's a projection, yeah. all right. So, okay. what can they do? What can they do to see that this? Uh, do, I mean, it defies the the odds, really. Yeah, I think it's not. It wasn't. It wasn't spoiled in a day. Okay. We didn't come to this level in a day, and mm. we cannot get out in a day. Mm. So, mm. it has mm. to be very intentional policies. Okay. If you see the World Bank projection, there were reasons yeah. that were given. Okay. One, they said inflation. Okay. Two, they said mountain debt. Mm. Then they talked about high borrowing costs because now borrowing costs has increased. Yes. So because of your po the poverty level, because of the high debt ratio or level of the country now, yeah. when other countries are borrowing at 5%, the labor level now is like mm -hmm. in 5%. London Interbank offer it. Yeah. That's the standard rate of borrowing now is yes. 5%. But for countries like Nigeria, Ghana, who are highly indebted, they are borrowing at 10% because you are holding a higher risk. Yes. The risk of you paying is higher, so they give you at a higher risk. So the so, uh, World Bank has talked about borrowing costs, um, high inflation rates, mm. insecurity. So I think those are the places that we will focus. And policy somersault, policy inconsistency. Yeah. You see the PIAB that the country set up um, recently, yeah. it was postponed again for 18 months. You see the CBN policy on them. Um, New currency shifted. So the deadline shift is not the job of this um, administration at all. Exactly. Because, so, yeah. so, so, so that in, mm. in summary, policy consistency. So African countries should mm. now become policy consistent. Set up a policy and become. If investors see that you are not your policy comes today, tomorrow you are changing it. Yeah. They are not willing to come because they are coming with funds. Nobody wants to put its money in a place where it's dicey, where it's volatile. So yeah. those are the things African countries have to be intentional with your policies. Try to reduce some borrowing. Once you increase your IGR, not necessarily yeah. tax, okay. all the resources, annex them, do more of secondary production. Mm. Look at gold. If you sell raw gold and you sell refined gold in form of earrings and jewelries, yeah. you can't compare the two costs. Look at crude oil in its raw form, yeah. primary form, and look at crude oil when refined to fuel. Mm. They are different. Look at cocoa. Okay. A pot of cocoa you will sell at probably 200 now, but when you do it into chocolate, mm. that pot of cocoa will give you as many as many boxes of chocolate and you buy one box of chocolate three times the price of the of the raw cocoa so we should now start doing secondary production 
Those are the only ways that African countries can, can move out. Let, let, let me take care of this. Uh, a lot of persons will say, um, if only we can actually find a way to dealing with corruption, yeah. then uh, we can actually go a long way to see how we can rejuvenate the Yes, economy. it will reduce corruption, we reduce it by 30%. If even as, if as much as 50%. We, most times in Nikon, we don't like to talk about but so that you don't look seem to be being controlled. But mm. we know there is a corruption. We talk of so many things that drive inflation, mm. demand pull, cost pull. There is also corru corruption push inflation because by the time you steal resources that should be used for the general, which yeah. I talked about the last time that somebody took, allegedly took the budget of that could meet yeah. a state. Yeah. So imagine you have taken the state budget mm. in your pocket. So and we have numerous. Look at the Dasuki gate. Look at the um, the Zania um, um, case. You have so many Sarua, cases yeah. that if you bring it, so if corruption is reduced and it's not, it cannot, it's not magic. It's the system. The white man also wants to be corrupt the way the black man. But because there are systems in place that when you do it, you don't even need to. It will just pick you up. The president, whoever it is, will pick you. So systems are in place. You know that the American president, if he takes a guest to his house yeah. now, Joe Biden, mm. he will pay for his meal. From his pocket. His pocket yeah. Yeah. Mm. If I when you are they are inaugurating you as the American president, there's a rent, you pay rent. Mm. There's some money that is deducted for your salary for rent for staying in the White House. Mm. So you pay rent as the president. But yeah, you you, you you can bring your whole family and the government pay. So we have to become prudent until we start cutting those wastes. Yeah. Corruption, fighting. You talked about immigration, you talked about customs. Instead of locking this and saying no more bringing rice into the economy because of custom, mm. why don't you put CCTV to fish out the corrupt people? So until you start doing that, corruption, when we cut corruption down, yeah. cut waste, not just corruption, waste, just like I talked about the white and so on, then we would have brought, reduced our problems in Africa and Nigeria especially by as much as 30 35%. Yeah. Dr. Uh, Osaze, you are. Uh, it's always a delight uh, whenever we call upon you on the show. We appreciate your time with us. Thank it's you very much. Good morning. Thank All you right, the much. program is still business. Rendezvous, and we'll be back shortly. Please stay with us.